Welcome to you all. My name is Andrew Chung. I'm artistic producer of London Symphonia and welcome to Behind the Music. This is our series of pre-concert chats with our guest artists and special guests. Um, and today I'm joined by Abigail Richardson Schulte. Hello, Abigail. Hello, Andrew. So Abigail is the composer of one of the two pieces on our next program. So she has composed music for the hockey sweater. So by way of introduction, I'd just like to read a short bio of Abigail. Um, so Abigail Richardson Schulte's music has been commissioned and performed by major orchestras, presenters, music festivals, and broadcasters. Abigail won first prize at the prestigious UNESCO International Rostrum of Composers, which resulted with broadcast in 35 countries and a commission from Radio France. She also won the Karen Kieser Prize. Uh, it's a CBC prize. She's won the Dora Maver Moore Award for Best New Opera, CMC Emerging Composer Award, Hamilton Arts Award, and the Quentin Doolittle Award from New Works Calgary. She has been affiliate composer with the uh, Toronto Symphony Orchestra and curated ancillary events at their New Creations Festival. Abigail is currently in her ninth year as composer in residence with the Hamilton Philharmonic Orchestra, and she teaches composition at the University of Toronto. This is great that you could join us for today. Um, so the hockey sweater, uh, the story is iconic. Uh, it's a children's story written by Rob Carrier. It is uniquely Canadian, but your musical setting of this piece has reached some very impressive milestones as well. Take me through the numbers. How many performances have there been of this piece? Well, we're at over 150 now, which is really, really wonderful. Uh, most of them have been in English, but uh, we've had a good number of performances in French as well. And um, many of them have been narrated by Rock Carrier himself. So that's also been a real pleasure to bring his story to life and have him tell it in this new form. That's amazing. And it's also gone across the ocean, ended up in France. How did that come about? Well, uh, an orchestra in, in France, uh, L'Orchestre National d'Ile de France, wanted to celebrate Canada on our birthday in 2017. So they put together a Canadian concert and they asked me to uh, make a new arrangement of the piece, just a, you know, slight adjustments in orchestration. So in a way it was sort of a, a premiere for them. And uh, so they performed the piece about 10 times. And uh, yeah, it's, it's interesting. It's, it's actually going to be getting a, a life over there, including with this uh, smaller arrangement that you are going to be performing. Very cool. Now, for their orchestra, it wasn't exactly the same size or the same dimensions of, of what you had composed originally. So you enlarged it or you took some pieces out? How did that all work? Yeah, a little bit of a shuffle. Added a harp, you know, took away some lower brass. Um, it was, uh, they, they tend to do uh, education uh, in a week where some of their players are off. So they, they uh, yeah, it was just a, a little bit of a shuffle. Um, but I mean, certainly this uh, arrangement the, that, I, that I've made here, this smaller arrangement for 10 players was much more of a shuffle. <laughs> uh -huh. uh, yeah. No kidding. We'll talk about the chamber version in just a little bit. So take me through how this all started. What year did it start it? And, and did you put forward the idea or did someone come to you and say, hey, you know, Abigail, we've got a great idea for you. How did this all Yeah, good, good question. Uh, well, uh, first of all, I had been affiliate composer uh, at the Toronto Symphony Orchestra. So I knew them well. They were like my home orchestra and I continued to work for them for uh, in a new music festival. And uh, one day I happened to be walking by the, the desk of um, uh, Roberta Smith. She, she ran education for the TSO and she pulled open her bottom drawer and pulled out the hockey sweater and said, Abigail, could this be set to music? And I said, yes. And she said, do you like hockey? And I said, yes, which was actually a bit of a lie. <laughs> um, you know, I, I did play some hockey as a kid in my figure skates, but you know, I was certainly not, uh, not, not a hockey aficionado. And also my family's English. We came from England. So, you know, hockey was not part of my family tradition, but I did understand the rivalries. I grew up in Calgary with the Calgary Flames against the Edmonton Oilers. So I knew, I understood this story. I knew how it impacted people and I had had it read to me in grade four. So I knew it, I was very excited about it. Um, and then uh, from, from there, they announced it. 
Uh, it was actually a big deal at the announcement, just that it would happen. You know, it was on the full front page of the National Post and, and a good number of other newspapers. It was just, for some reason, public interest that this piece was being rejuvenated and, and turned into a new form. And now, then at that, at that time, was it co-commissioned yet or was it um, just TSO? Um, just, just, just the other commissioners had come on board, National Arts Center Orchestra and the Calgary Philharmonic Orchestra. So it was actually Canada's first triple commission. Hmm. Very cool. Very cool. Hmm. Um, and then, um, so, th I mean, it's a story. Um, so it's storytelling, right? Through music. And then it, that's kind of one, of one of the things that you're most interested in, I suppose. Absolutely. Yeah. And, you know, I did, I needed to bring this story to life and needed to be at the right uh, level. I mean, I knew this was a responsibility to turn this uh, story into a piece of music. And I didn't want it to be uh, you know, so sort of over the top artsy that it, that it wouldn't impact people. So I, I really wanted to make sure that I was using the right language for the book, you know, so to set us up at the beginning, I, I want to put us in rural Quebec in the 1940s. So I made a fiddle tune, right? For instance, uh, the church is a big part of the story. So I included an organ, which by the way, works pretty well in the hockey arena too. Yes. <laughs> um, and, and I wrote a church hymn for it. Um, so a lot of these little things, even my, you know, my main hockey theme really reminded me of uh, broadcasting music from the 70s and 80s, like what I associate with, uh, you know, the sort of sports broadcasting. Uh, so yes, I did want to put us in that place and, and tell the stories and, and bring the characters to life. So a lot of the characters, you know, they'll have their own theme, for example, or the sports themes will be told by the brass, the rock's mother will be, uh, you know, told by the woodwinds with her own theme. I love it. That's awesome. Um, and then there's Rock Carrier himself, right? So um, back when you were pitching the idea or working it out with a Toronto Symphony Orchestra, um, and then you met with Rock or you had had a conversation with him, what was that like? Well, it, it was neat. You know, uh, Rock, first of all, when he heard that this story was going to be set to music by, as he called me, a young lady who did not know hockey, he was, he was a little bit alarmed. <laughs> um, and so I wrote uh, some music and for, I didn't know that by the way, I was just given the commission and I started writing my piece, but TSO had arranged for a meeting. And so we met uh, there in, in Peter Inchin's studio and, and Rock came in from Montreal and I played some of my themes on the piano for him. And, you know, he said from that moment he was sold and, and he has been such a tremendous supporter of this. Um, and, and as well, you know, I needed to tailor the piece for him. So uh, this was quite an unusual uh, project in, in pairing narration with orchestra and very specific points. I mean, the orchestra responds to the narrator at every point, they have to be absolutely united, right? right. Um, and so I had made the timing based on my own uh, reciting of the hockey sweater. But then when I heard, luckily at the last minute before submitting, I thought, oh, I should ask CBC if they have a recording of rock reading, and they did. So at that point, I had to go back and adjust the spacing because rock reads very slowly in English. So it really ah. was tailored to him. So it's, sometimes we have a bit of a problem with a, you know, a native English speaker reading because there's just so much space in there. And, so, and I'm sure we'll encounter, uh, you know, these interesting facets as well when we bring Tom Allen into the picture. And Tom has a different pace of reading, certainly in English, than Rock does, right? No so. question. And being a broadcaster, of course, he's, he's very quick. So um, yep. I, yeah, I really look forward to seeing that. And, I, and I'm just delighted that he will be narrating. That's wonderful. Yeah, very cool. And then when you bring it to, uh, when you brought it to uh, National Arts Center Orchestra, then they wanted a bilingual version, right? So did they want it like a little bit in French and then back to English, back to French? Is that how it went? Yes, that's how it went. <laughs> Wow. Uh, it, it, very strange. I think it was it was only done uh, at the NAC in the bilingual version and not since. They since recognized that it's it's probably better to have English performances and French performances that they're they're separate. Um, yeah. But it exists. Yeah. Like made to order composing, crazy, crazy. That's right. <laughs> and then, um, well, Rock must have been really pleased with uh, the amount of media attention it, it, it got. It really 
captured the the imagination of Canadians once again. Uh, this marriage of sports and then and then music and then taking it across the country, different orchestras. Um, yeah. You know, really- at the premiere, I'll just share a little bit at the at the premiere. It it was just wild. Um, you know, we had 14 different networks at the back of the hall. Uh, I didn't even know there were that many. <laughs> and then we had a media day just assigned 20 minutes per organization, per newspaper, per uh, TV show, um, you know, going from one to the other. Uh, we were on Canada AM. Uh, it, it was just incredible. Um, and, and also Chris Hatfield, who had taken the book to space to represent Canadian culture, was wandering around the lobby in a space suit. <laughs> We, we had Ken Dryden hosting the show. He also hosted a lot of shows at the National Arts Centre Orchestra as well. So it's been really interesting to have, um, you know, our little contemporary music world really getting out into, uh, in, into larger uh, sort of pop culture in a way. Joining the media frenzy, so fun. <laughs> and then there's a few London Symphonia connections to this piece. So as I understand it, Joseph Lanza, our concert master, he was guest concert master for the audio um, orchestra recording uh, of the hockey sweater. So this is with Hamilton Philharmonic. That's super cool. And that was, uh, what, is that 2019? Yes, it was released 2019. Uh, yeah, it was g- great to have uh, Joe on the project. And, and you know, he took it so seriously. Uh, I, I knew him a bit before that through working with him uh, at uh, our chamber music series in Hamilton. Um, but, uh, yeah, so he, he certainly, I think, knew of the piece and, uh, yeah, I mean, he called me up and had a few conversations just questioning whether it should be this way or this way. And, oh, it was just great to have his involvement at at such a high level. Um, I played the piece with Hamilton Philharmonic in concert. I think this goes back to 2014 Christmas time. Um, and then Lisa, our flutist, um, she played the, the chamber version uh, in Hamilton, and was that recently? Or yes, it was. Uh, it wasn't uh, this past summer, but the summer before, in the in the previous season, actually the beginning of the nineteen twenty season. Um, my husband has a, a chamber music series called Chamber Music Hamilton, so he was behind, uh, you know, getting this uh, uh, this version of it, the smaller version, uh, and paired it with Carnival of the Animals. Um, right. And Liesl played in the, the two performances of that. Um, and it was, uh, this, this version was uh, commissioned by uh, Bob Misson, who is a singer and agent. So. Oh, okay. So mm-hmm. was it always in the, it wasn't by chance that it was, uh, inst- uh, you reorchestrated it for these instruments. I guess in the back of your mind, you were thinking, okay, this is a great piece to pair with Carnival of the Animals and make it a family, you know, a whole family show. Yes, and you know, uh, there are a lot of festival, I mean, part of what, why this piece is so special for me is uh, it's always so wonderful to get out to different communities and, uh, you know, communities and organizations that wouldn't necessarily play new music sometimes. Um, and uh, there was some interest in, in getting this to summer festivals where they might have a chamber ensemble, for instance, and would, wouldn't have an orchestra. So it was just another avenue for it, certainly. Great. So um, the scoring then is for, there's two pianos in this. Um, and then there's, oh, you have to, I'm on the spot here. So we've got flute and we've got clarinet and we've got string quintet and then a percussionist, right? Mm -hmm. And so how did you right size this? Like, how did you bring it, like all those brassy themes and that sort of thing and and bringing them down to this ensemble? Yeah, good, good question. Um, Because the, the, uh, the, the instrumentation of the orchestra is just really integral to the characters of those themes. Um, so I'll just talk about the themes for a moment. Rock's mother, who's really naggy, she's, you know, wah, 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 this little woodwind theme. So I could, I could keep that. And by the way, I was a little bit worried when I wrote that. And, and, and I did tell Rock in advance, like, I'm sorry, I made your mother a nag. And, and he said, it's okay, she was a nag. <laughs> so I always think of that in, the, in that part, I've got these little naggy woodwinds. So I kept the woodwinds. Of course, I have flute and clarinet. And then I have percussion to supplement. And I have, and I also included celeste, uh, which is in the original. So I can still use that with keyboard. So a lot of that I could keep completely uh, the same. 
Um, the brass theme is is the problematic one. The sport, I borrow a few sports themes, um, which work so well with the brass. So then I can really use the piano to fill in, uh, mm -hmm. and the strings I think can sound quite triumphant. So everybody just pitches in and and adds to that. Um, but just to go back to the piano for a second, I actually write at the piano. Um, I and in writing this piece to start out with. Uh, it was a condensed version with a piano score and another staff above and, and a lot of little uh, notes to myself about what orchestra um, instruments it should be. But I think it works very well just as a, a piano violin piece. And so I actually also made a piano violin piece that was oh. commissioned by the uh, Esther Honens Festival um, and, and played by Jackie Parker. So that version exists as well. <laughs> I didn't know that. That's news to me. Very cool. Yeah, Very yeah. Cool. Um, I think he's looking to uh, to record that, to video it anyway. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, it, it's quite a natural fit. I think the piano violin and then expanding out to this 10 version, you know, feels feels very full. I'm, I'm delighted with this arrangement. Cool. Now, as part of the performance, there's a number of props that add, you know, add more fun to the, to, to the occasion. Uh, tell me a little bit about these. Yeah, well, you know, it all really started out in the book with uh, with the uh, the story, which is true, by the way. The story is true. The story is Rock Carrier as a little boy. All of this actually happened to him. Uh, and in the book, uh, he breaks his stick against the ice so hard that it breaks. So I had to do that on stage. It was an obligation. How could I set this to music without actually doing it? And so um, working with the TSO stage manager, uh, he broke a lot of hockey sticks and he glued them back together with lots of different types of glue and found that the, the best type was a, a hot glue gun um, and that the, the stick could glue back together again in time for the next performance. Because when TSO and large orchestras do it, they sometimes do it in a 10 performance run. You know, that's how the numbers start stacking up with that many performances. Um, so the hockey stick, <laughs> uh, there's a box when he goes to the, the hockey jersey is delivered um, and a, he gets a Canada Post uh, box, you know, so there are instructions on how that should just be a, a plain brown paper parcel and should open up so that he can pull the hockey jersey out. <laughs> um, there are hockey jerseys, so orchestras, if they want, can rent hockey jerseys from the Canadian Music Centre. You know, we have the Rock Carrier hockey jersey, the Maple Leafs one with his name on the back. <laughs> we have Montreal Canadiens jerseys that they can, uh, that they can uh, wear. Because I also put a hockey game on stage. I ask players to have this hockey game, which coincides with action on stage, with uh, chanting and cheering by the orchestra. Um, so, uh, so things like that. Um, there are also just a, a directions, like for instance, I actually went to Saint Justin with Rock, the, the place where the book took place, where he grew up. And uh, I asked him, um, you know, what, what were the sounds from your childhood? And he said, oh, the sounds of the blades on the ice. So um, then I needed to find a place for that. So during the hockey game, we have the sound of the blades on the ice, which is like a tile scraping on a tile or a piece of metal on the back of a, a frying pan or something. There are a few different ways to make it. But, uh, you know, there are all of these unusual elements um, in the story that needed to come uh, come into the performance of it. So that's why there's quite a long list that goes out with the music rental to say this is how to do it. <laughs> Yeah, we've never received. Uh, uh, we, we rent the score and we and we get it from the Canadian Music Center, and we've never received a package like this before. <laughs> it's quite. Oh funny. yeah, it's because you 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 didn't uh, get the extra rental of the jerseys. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's pretty wild. It's pretty wild. Yeah. Well, thank you so much for joining us today, Abigail. This has been an absolute delight speaking with you and and you know feeding off your enthusiasm for this concert. Uh, I'm looking forward to performing in this concert. Um, and uh, yes, we wish you all the well, uh, all the best in this uh, interesting year. Yeah, thank you. And, uh, you know, thank you for, for persevering and, uh, and doing this concert at this time. I am just so looking forward to seeing it. Terrific. So if you want to catch this concert, it will be performed on January 30th. This is at 7.30, uh, a live streamed event. Um, check us out online at londonsymphonia.ca for tickets.